Hello everyone, welcome to the lecture series on PLC programming. In today's video, we are going to take a look at example number 10 which has the following problem statement. At the first place, let us go through the problem and try to understand the requirement. From there, we can get started on how to draw the ladder diagrams for these type of questions. So the problem statement is as follows. Write the optimum ladder logic rung for each of the following scenarios and arrange the instructions for optimum performance. So they have given us two separate questions A and B. Before that, if you carefully observe the statement, the first line, they have mentioned something called as optimum ladder logic. This is quite different than all the other examples that we have done. If you carefully observe, you don't uh, have optimum word used anywhere in all the previous examples that we have solved. So you have to solve as much as problems as possible so that you will be able to get the grip on the subject. So. At the first place, what is optimum ladder logic? So optimum stands for the most favorable scenario uh, in general or the best scenario that you can actually build. So if it is with respect to uh, ladder logic, so how do you build the best ladder logic uh, system for a particular program? So that is what is the requirement. So usually we used to only concentrate on the ladder logic, but here we have to focus on how to uh, build it in an efficient way. When we say efficient, it can be either reducing time or it can be reducing reducing the cost of the circuit or any other matter for that. At the first place, let us go through problem A and try to solve that and from there we can go to problem B. So problem A states if limit switches LS1 or LS2 or LS3 are on or if LS5 and LS7 are on, turn on otherwise turn off. So they're basically trying to say there is a there is a system like if you assume there is a light load and uh, you have these switches. So if all of uh, these conditions are satisfied, it should turn on. Otherwise, it should turn off. That is what they're trying to say. That means LS1 or LS2 or LS3. So this is actually OR operation, isn't it? So uh, if you have not uh, gone through the OR operation video, please do watch it. That will give you a fair amount of idea. And this is AND operation, LS5 and LS7. They have given it together. So uh, they have also specified one more condition. Commonly, if LS5 and LS7 are on, the other conditions rarely occur. So this is uh, very helpful for us to get the optimum condition done. Before that, let us go through the general ladder diagram process. So we have LS1 switch, LS2 switch, LS3 switch that are connected in parallel in this particular fashion. So because these are OR operation, isn't it? LS5 and LS7 should be connected in series because they correspond to AND operation. So I've connected them in series. Let us enclose the connection by connecting them in parallel. So all of them are connected in parallel because there is another OR over here. Now we have input and output. Now they have given a condition. Commonly if LS5 and LS7 are on, the other conditions rarely occur. So if these two are on, say for example both of them are on the output will be high isn't it so the output will be one in that case so in that case so most of the times what they're trying to say is ls5 and ls7 most of the times if they are on the other conditions irrespective of the other conditions the output will be high isn't it so what happens is that with respect to uh, the uh, the logic when you uh, actually uh, build this program and dump it uh, in the controller so what happens is it initially checks for ls5 and ls7 so it goes rung by rung if you carefully observe so the first rung it checks if both of them are high automatically the output will be high it doesn't require to check even ls2 ls3 and ls1 ls1 ls2 and ls3 so it, it doesn't have to check these conditions if this is true automatically the output will be high so in that case it will reduce the amount of time required to check the scans isn't it it doesn't have to check ls1 ls2 ls3 each of the rungs need not be checked only the first rung if it is checked it is more than enough and that is why you will have an optimum ladder logic if you place ls1 above ls2 above ls3 above and ls5 ls7 underneath it has to go through each of the rung conditions to get the output so this is where we say we will be saving time by having LS5 and LS7 in series initially because they have already given commonly if LS5 and LS7 are on the other conditions rarely occur so if this is on other conditions uh, rarely occur and we don't have to even check because this is our operation so I hope this point is clear and this is how we will be approaching problem statement A now uh, we will look at problem B and what I would expect is you have to try to solve this on your own so 
let us uh, read the problem out anyhow i will be solving this you can uh, pause the video and try this problem on your own in case you don't get it you can definitely continue watching this video and uh, get a clear understanding on how to solve this problem so problem b goes like this turn on an output when switches s uh, s6 s7 and s8 all are on or when s5 is on alone so s5 is an indication of an alarm state so it is rarely on s7 is mostly on then s8 then s6 so at the first place let us have the switches and then let us place them so s6 s8 and s7 so it is output is high when all of these switches are on together that means it should be an and gate and uh, we have an or gate because they have mentioned or when s5 is on so s5 is an indication of an alarm state so it is rarely on so whichever rarely occurs let us place them in the bottom so you don't have to go through each of the rung conditions once if the first rung is high and if it can determine the output then you don't have to check for the second one isn't it and they have also mentioned it s7 is mostly on then s8 then s6 so if you carefully observe i placed it in a specific order s6 s8 and then s7 this is the order that you have to follow for optimum ladder condition so why is that so because they mentioned s7 is mostly on then s8 is mostly on then s6 so that means s6 has the least condition of it being on so i will first complete the circuit this is the input and this is the output so when uh, the controller checks the program what happens it first checks s6 so if s6 is false because s6 is having the least priority compared to s7 and s8 isn't it so if s6 is uh, off then this entire rung will actually be off isn't it so you don't have to check for s8 or s7 because this is and gate and you can straight away go to the second rung that is connected in parallel so this will save time this is the optimum ladder logic for problem statement b so i hope uh, this is a very unique type of a problem that you need to understand so i hope you were able to understand this uh, in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video meet you guys in another video thank you